Except I don't think the airspeed works. <laughs> Unless it climbs at 50 and cruises at 65. <laughs> but when I took off, I got going and I was like, it was still reading like zero. So I just kept going because I could feel it. So most of my climbs were probably pretty shallow because I didn't have the speed. But you know, it was a new airplane. Uh, but after a while, I started climbing a little bit more. It, anyway, we need to blow out the pedo lines is the problem. Okay, next morning we are going to see the pedo tube. Okay, not real hard. Yeah, I just really like. I'm gonna move the uh, crack lines out of the underneath the fairing. There. Okay, so the ones that are still bad are still in the thing. You just bypass them, or are you connected to the? I connected to the the uh, wing panel here. There's a connection up here. Okay. And then I just ran it down. Oh, so you think the the ones inside the wing are probably okay? Yeah, they're they're fine. They're they're aged, but as long as nobody okay moves them around, they should good. Okay. So you just replaced them from the center section down to the instruments. That's correct. Yes. Good. Okay. All right, good job. We may actually have some airspeed on this next flight. Okay, so here Eric and I are heading over to Prescott. You can see the Cottonwood Airport down there on the lower left wing. It was a nice, cool, crisp, clear morning great day to go flying i let eric uh, do the flying kind of over most of the way i gotta tell you on this instrument panel there is so much crap there that i would not have in my airplane i don't know if i can rip all that out when we rebuild the airplane but here we are headed over uh, about 1950 rpm we're climbing still a little bit 95 miles an hour of course we're almost 7,000 feet so airspeed is going to be down a little bit see the Cottonwood Airport back in the distance. Heading over the hills, gorgeous day. There's a big plateau off in the distance where Prescott is, and if you look back behind me, you can see the red rocks of Sedona. Yeah, so I let Eric fly a little bit coming over the deal there. I was getting some video, so pretty cool. So we came over here to basically get a transponder deal. When I first turned it on, it wasn't working, but I think after it warmed up, all of a sudden I started getting the Did light flashing. Light? So I just, yeah. I should have just turned it on a hell of a lot earlier. But okay. anyway, so we're doing the uh, transponder check here. So we just ran through all the numbers, ident, check all that stuff. Anyway, got to be legal one point I'm going back. So <laughs> is that like a little antenna out there? It, uh, uh, this is. This is just the. Uh, this is a transceiver antenna for the test set. Cool. As soon as we get this done, we're heading back to Cottonwood. This is Prescott, apparently, is a big headquarters for Emory Riddle. They got a big, big school over here. And they just like doubled, more than doubled the size of their uh, pilots that they're going to train. The only sad part that I hear is they're now training more UAV pilots and engineers. No UAV, you know, you have pilots and engineers than real pilots. <laughs> anyway, I think the days of what I'm doing is becoming, well, it already is an art. Um, hope to keep it alive as long as we can. One day I want to create a school that is from pilots to flyers and teach the uh, digital age crowd uh, how to feel the air and that kind of stuff. And uh, anyway, we'll see, it'd be pretty cool. This type of radio equipment is not really uh, in my repertoire in my recent 
flying, so things have changed so much. I didn't realize it took so long for them to warm up. But over here, I've actually got cockpit heat, believe it or not. So uh, this warms the pilot up a little bit, not a lot, a little bit. See it? Yeah, it's going to be a wall. You think so? I'll go oh, in yeah, your... that's the one that takes it. It's a style that usually takes about 10 minutes. He is changing out the encoder. The encoder wouldn't come up for the telling what your altitude is. So. And the cool part about it was we had airspeed coming up here. <laughs> That's us, so we pretty much got everything all figured out. He's still smiling. Oh man, this looks like we're, uh, we're in for a final test, huh? So we got a we got an encoder that's going to work, we feel, this time. It's warming up a little bit. I had to take off my long winter underwear top. Okay, we'll see what we get. All you're going to need back here is the battery, right? Okay, go ahead. And... Okay, battery coming on. Okay, we got power on the encoder. Give and roll, she's bolts, Captain. So we're looking for something that says reply or something, right? Yeah, it'll come up and uh, should give us the probably 1200 percentage reply. Hmm. But the kings usually take one and a half to two minutes to warm up. And hmm. They have a, a timer in them that keeps them from coming on until the tubes warm. Okay, we're still farting around trying to get this fixed, and the encoder is just not picking up the deal, so we're dragging all the stuff. Over to the avionics shop. When we came here, we went to the FBO, so oh well. We got really serious now, we got it in the avionics shop, so we've already been here for at least three hours. So, anyway, they're chipping away. Okay, we got about almost an hour and a half on it. And before I leave, what I would like to do would be to basically dump the oil and check the screen. So, ready to rock. There we go. Is a uh, gas gun going to be a problem? Yeah, I've got He's got one. Oh, okay, good. And it probably won't yeah. Just drop. Yeah, exactly. Sure it won't. Famous last words. There, Susan. There we go. Ooh, it's warm too. All right. Smells good. Yeah, I don't there see any. More than five gallons in there, right? I can't. Uh, I think the the tank only holds four, but the engine will have some. So, but anyway, it's. Uh, I don't hear any chunks at this point, which is good. At least look at the screen, I guess. Just want to make sure everything's running the best it can before I take off. Okay, I didn't hear or see any big chunks, and that looks pretty clean. Now, uh, now, if you reach up there, yeah, pull the screen, yeah. There we go. That looks clean as a whistle. Awesome. I don't know what that little, a little piece there or something. I don't know what that is. Right there. Right there. See that? Or is that just oil? Oil. Oh, it's just oil. I'm happy. That's great. Thanks, guys. I see some rum in my future tonight to celebrate. So. Yeah, I don't think I got a great airplane now. Everything's working. I'm happy. Good, good, good.
Hey, Kermit here. Okay, so I'm basically packing to leave. I'm trying to figure out. I'm actually going over to Sedona to do a little bit of a uh, uh, video shoot. Okay, so I'm going to go land there. Eric's going to meet me with a helicopter. And uh, I'm packing stuff. Got stuff back here. I got stuff in the back cockpit. I got the front loaded up. And as I'm looking here, I'm going, you know something? I don't need anybody up in the front here. I'm going to take this stick out right there. that out. Pull that off. Take the stick out. There's a stick in the back. So I don't have any issues there. Okay, cool. Okay, here I am leaving out of the Cottonwood Airport, heading over to Sedona. It was a really a pretty flight heading over in probably less than 20 minutes. new vision for the, the, the fantasy of flight and I, I think it's absolutely amazing on, on and empowering on his visions for the future and, and for fantasy of flight and I'm, I'm and I can tell my kids hey we're, this is where the airplane's at and it's gonna always be there for generation after generation yeah so when my son or, or my daughters when they have children they can go to the Kermit's place and I know it's gonna be there Okay, so here we go, the swan song flight of this airplane leaving the Sedona airport for quite possibly the last time. It hopped rides there for several decades. A lot of people got some great memories and experiences. You can see the Sedona airport on the plateau in the background up there at the top. My wife and I bought a piece of property out there a long time ago. We haven't built on it yet, but every year we go back and we redo our wedding ceremony on the property. The only other person that's ever been to the ceremony is my daughter. Colorado Plateau up there. Grand Canyon is just to the north. Eric was actually doing some filming with his phone out the front there, but basically we were doing a photo shoot with the cameraman out the side with the door open. Lots of beautiful rocks, beautiful scenery. Lots of hiking, lots of mountain biking. That's Cathedral Rock down below there. That is the most photographed site in all of Arizona. There's Bell Rock to the right, Courthouse was there to the left in the middle. That's Coffee Pot Rock behind the tail. They name a lot of the rocks out there based on the shapes. That's the town of Sedona going up to the Oak Creek Canyon to Flagstaff. Beautiful drive. If you ever get a chance, you have to go. It's such a special place. Just absolutely gorgeous. This was my last pass down West Sedona. After we finished the photo shoot, I waved goodbye, wagged my wings, and headed south to Casa Grande for the night. Okay, so here I am headed south, really kind of on the first uh, leg of my trip. 
just headed south to Casa Grande, which is just a little south, southeast of Phoenix, so I've got to go past the big city and uh, get around under the airport traffic areas. I don't really want to talk to anybody. 1900 RPM, 105 miles an hour, 6400 feet at that moment. Heading south down Highway 17. You see Phoenix on the map there, so that's Highway 17 down below me. I've traveled that road many a time, driving up and back from Phoenix. It's kind of a big mountain range off there to the west. Lots and lots of open land. Just north of uh, Phoenix there, I'm just coming into the city. There you can see downtown off in the distance. Uh, you see up there where all the yellow is is Phoenix, and I'm heading to Casa Grande down there, so that'll be my first night stop. I got my GPS on my knee there. Uh, Casa Grande Airport in front of me, turning in for a left downwind. Coming in on final. And touching down for the end of my first day of an epic trip back to Florida. Now I'd, I'd already planned ahead. I had some friends down there and uh, was going to stop in. I'd been there before and seen a shop that uh, restores warbirds and stuff. And it's uh, Goshawk Aviation. Mags, master, fuel. Okay, here I am at Casa Grande. I put my airplane in for the night, which is very nice. Gosshawk Unlimited. That's Dave and Lindsey Goss that run the business. I got a chance to do a little bit of a tour. That's the Collings Foundation Fock Wolf 190. And I got a chance to go through this privateer PB4Y2 and do a little bit of a Kermi camp, which we'll post as a future episode. What a great end to a great first day. <laughs>